This is the complete iOS development beginner's course. My name is Alec Kriebel. Throughout this whole series, I will be your host and instructor. I'm an iOS developer myself. I've been developing apps for four years now. This course has been designed to take you from having absolutely no programming knowledge to releasing your first app on the App Store. Right now, you're only watching part of this series. The full course includes many more lessons, including how to monetize and submit apps to the App Store. Click the link in the description now to check out the full unabridged course and to create a fantastic source of passive income. Now let's get back to the lesson. Here are some prerequisites. So now for some prerequisites. So these are things that you will absolutely need to continue further on with this course. So first of all, you're going to need a Mac uh, running 10.10 .10 Yosemite. Uh, the reason for this is if you're not running 10.10 .10 Yosemite, you're not able to download Xcode, and Xcode is what we'll be using for the majority of this course. It's where you program iPhone apps. So because you can't get OS X 10.10 .10 on a Windows PC, uh, you're going to need a Mac for this. Personally, I'm using a mid-2014 15-inch MacBook Pro, uh, but any computer running 10.10 .10 Yosemite should be good enough. You'll need at least 2.6 gigabytes of disk space. As of Xcode 6.2, it takes up about 2.58 gigabytes of disk space, so you'll need at least that to download Xcode and install it. And finally, you'll need an internet connection. Uh, the reason I say this is because you're going to need to download things off of line, and to upload your apps, you need an internet connection. Uh, to get Xcode, you need an internet connection. An internet connection is essential. You don't need it while you're programming, but for some of the other development stuff, you're going to need it. And here are some recommendations. So as for some recommendations, so these are things that you don't absolutely need, but are good to have and will help you out if you do. A basic knowledge of iOS. So this basic knowledge just comes from having used iOS before. You'd obviously have this if you've ever used an iPhone. It just helps to know your way around an iPhone while developing for iOS apps. The second thing is basic math skill. Uh, algebra level would be preferred. It just helps to have some sort of math skill background uh, to understand how algebra works uh, because programming concepts do have algebra in them. So that does help, but you don't absolutely need it. An iOS device is recommended. The reason for that being if you become a paid iOS developer, you can test your apps on a physical iOS device and it is always better to test on a real device than simulating. And finally, the most current software versions of OS X, Xcode, and whatever iOS version is currently out. It's always best to have the latest software versions. I hope you're ready for the next few hours in this series because they may be some of the most informative hours of your life. You're going to learn a lot in this course. I'm proud to present it to you. Thank you for watching. Remember this course releases new lessons every Wednesday and Thursday of every week. Subscribe now to not miss them.